Hey guys, welcome to another Stable Diffusion tutorial. Today I want to show you how to create a morphing animation from an input video. So on the left side you can see the original video and on the right side you can see the result that we created with Stable Diffusion using a series of prompts and creating an interpolation between these prompts. I'm going to use this method for my new music video which should be out on Friday. So if you want to take a look at our music channel, link down below. Okay, first let's get some free video footage from Pixabay. Basically you can use any video you like, but I just want to make it short and simple. So let's find our video and download it. I'm going with this facial expression video because it's kind of cool. So let's download and rename it and we are good to go. I will also quickly create an image sequence out of the video using FFmpeg, but that's just for demonstration purposes later on. And you can skip this step because it isn't necessary. Okay, now here we are in Stable Diffusion, Automatic 11.11, and there are several ways how you can create or manipulate videos. So there is image to image where you can use an existing image and turn it into a different image by using a single prompt. We also have a great extension called ControlNet, which forces the newly created image to stick very close to the pose of the original image. We also have the batch image to image function, which allows us to feed a whole image sequence, manipulate it frame by frame, according to the prompt and the other settings we use. The problem is that we just can use a single prompt that will be valid for the whole video and we cannot make any changes to this prompt during the creation of the video. Then we have the Deforum extension which gives us more options. You can enter a series of prompts with a frame number and Deforum will automatically change the prompt whenever it reaches the next prompt in the prompt sequence. So in this case at frame 0, 30, 60 and so on. In the keyframes section we even have an interpolation mode that doesn't only change the prompt when it reaches a new one in the prompt sequence, but it tries to calculate the interpolation between those two prompts. So it creates a smooth transition between two prompts. The only problem with the interpolation mode is that you cannot use a video as an input, but it's bound to the prompts you enter. There is also a video input mode, which allows you to use a video as an input. It's also using the prompt sequence to change the animation at the given frames, but it doesn't make an interpolation between these frames, but rather a jump between two prompts so it's not a smooth transition, but rather a hard cut between two prompts. Now how can we change that? Let's take a deeper look how the interpolation mode works and how it creates these transitions. So let's hit the generate button and open the terminal to see what it does. Okay, here we can see that it doesn't just use the prompt, but it also uses the next prompt using different weights. The great thing with the forum is that you can also use mathematical functions in order to manipulate prompts or other things. And in this case it says at frame 1, create a pretty young girl with a weight of 0 0.9666 and a middle-aged woman uh, at the weight of 0 0.0333, which means that it will be most likely a pretty young girl and very unlikely a middle-aged woman. Now these weights are changing with every new frame, shifting them closer and closer from a pretty young girl to a middle-aged woman until at frame 30, that's where the next prompt in the prompt sequence starts. The weight of a pretty young girl will be zero and a middle-aged woman will be one. Now that we know how interpolation works, we can apply this knowledge to the video input mode and can create a smooth transition between different prompts. First let's change our prompts by adding the next prompt in the sequence and combining it with AND. 
and then we need to figure out a way to tell the forum which weights it should use. Now that's in fact easier than you might think. First there is a variable in the forum called t which returns the frame number that's just rendering so we know exactly at frame we currently are and there's the mathematical modulo function that returns the remainder of a division of two numbers. We also know that the distance between two prompts is 30 frames so we are able to create a formula to calculate the proper weights for each frame. So from 1 down to 0 for a pretty young girl and from 0 to 1 for a middle aged woman. So it's 1 minus t modulo 30 divided by 30 for the pretty young girl and t modulo 30 divided by 30 for the middle aged woman. Now let's base these two formulas in every single line of the prompt sequence and we are done. Please note that the formulas must be enclosed by a backspace sign. Don't mix it up with a single quote sign, which looks quite similar, but that just doesn't work. Now before we start rendering, let's adjust the final settings. Switch to video input mode, set strength and CFG scale to a low value, so the animation sticks rather close to the input video. In the init tab, video input, paste the path to your input video. Then let's turn on control net. Let's set the preprocessor and the model to depth and paste the path to your input video into the control net input video path. In the run section, choose the sampler and steps, adjust the width and height and use a fixed seed so all the frames will be rendered with the same seed and stay rather consistent. Then give it a batch name. That's the name of the output directory where all the frames will be saved. And that's basically it. If you want to improve the smoothness of your animation even further, go to the init video input tab and set the extract nth frame value to maybe three. That means that only every third frame will be rendered, which reduces the render time to only one third. And later on in your video editing software, you can reduce the playback speed to only one third and let the video editing software interpolate the missing frames. Okay, now let's hit the generate button and wait until it's finished. Okay, we are done. You can find all the rendered frames in your output folder. Now let me quickly create a video out of this image sequence. I'm on my Mac so I'm just using QuickTime but you can also just import the image sequence into your video editing software. Now here we got the final video and you can see that it's way too fast because we just rendered every third frame. So let's quickly jump over to our video editing software. In my case, that's Final Cut. Let's create a new project and import the newly created video. Let's reduce the speed of the clip to one third. So it will have exactly the same length than our input video. And I will also adjust the video quality to optical flow. In Final Cut, that's a function that tries to make the animation smoother. If you're using a different software, that might be a different function, but it's also not really necessary. Just helps to improve the quality a bit. Then let's export the video and see the final result. Okay, not too bad. Well, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.